Hey everybody, happy Torch Thursday tutorial stream. How's everybody doing out there in the wilds of the internet? Hey Lori, hope everyone had a great Thursday. We had a fun lunchtime stream where we did a fun um, earring project. I'm like, what, what did I teach? It was only six hours ago. It really wasn't that long ago and yet. Um, and now we're on Torch Thursday. So that means we are going to be doing, hey, ASO. All right, that means we're gonna be doing this one today. This is fabricated paperclip chain. So paperclip chain is of course the, the newest, trendiest, hottest shape and style in chain. And it's actually so hot and trendy that it's difficult to get the paperclip chain, um, especially in gold filled. So it's nice, you know, sometimes to be able to know how to make your own when the supply situation is um, a little bit weird, like the supply situation is right now. So let's talk tools and supplies um, for this evening's tutorial for our fabricated paperclip chain. All right, we're going to need wire. And for this chain, I used 18 gauge wire, which I think is a nice size for this. Now, um, I'm so smart that I forgot to order more 18 gauge sterling silver. So I'm actually going to be making a bimetal paper clip chain. I'm going to be using gold filled and sterling silver wire for my paper clip chain tonight. But 18 gauge is the size you want to use. Also, I just threw my paper clip chain on the floor. So that's exciting. Um, and we're going to be using that for the chain and for the clasp, though. If you wanted to use a heavier gauge, like 16 gauge for the clasp, you definitely could. And I think that's what I put in the online supply list. You're also going to need um, solder. You need medium solder and easy solder. So I have both. Um, no, nah, I didn't. I got no medium solder. I got easy and extra easy. Okay, that'll work. Um, easy and extra easy in sterling <laughs> silver. Basically, you just need one that's that melts at a higher melting point, one that melts at a lower melting point. I also have 14 karat gold solder for my gold filled. So you're going to need solder in two different densities. Again, medium and easy is what I recommend, but apparently my brain said easy and extra easy tonight. So that's what we're going to go with. As far as tools go, it's a fabrication class. That means you're going to need all of your torch tools. So that includes, of course, your torch. I've got my blazer butane, my favorite favorite is torch that I like to use. As everybody knows, you need a soldering surface. I'm going to be using my solderite, which is a nice, hard, um, fairly neat and clean soldering surface. You're going to need your chasing hammer and a bench block, which is just a steel block upon which we're going to hammer. You're going to need your pickle and pickle pot. We're going to talk about what that is and what it does when it's time for us to use it. Same with flux and a flux brush. You're going to need a file. Um, I have a half round file so it doesn't really matter what shape of file you have as long as you've got one flat surface so you can be half round you can be um, completely flat you could use a barrette file and um, just whatever you need you need one flat surface with your file you're going to need your basic wire working tools that is going to be your chain nose pliers your round nose pliers and your wire cutters you also are going to need a bail making pliers um, and I'm going to use my large size bail making pliers this evening. So bail making pliers are pliers that have instead of a taper, like your round nose pliers do, they actually have a step series of cylinders. This makes it easier to make a coil. And also you'll notice that obviously my bail making pliers are significantly larger in diameter than my round nose pliers. And um, steel wool, sandpaper, like all of those things that you typically need when you are fabricating. All right, so let's go ahead and start making our wire coils. So you basically are going to need for the size of chain that I prototyped, you're going to need about two inches of wire per one inch of finished chain because and I'm going to grab my chain off of the floor where I threw it. I got it. Um, so each of these links is approximately seven eighths of an inch long. And so I've got about seven eighths of an inch for the link. And then I, of course, need a little bit extra for the curves. So it's about two inches of wire 
per link. Now, the way I'm going to make my links is I'm actually going to start by making circles. And I'm going to use the large circle. Mm, large circle? No. Medium circle on my bail making pliers. So, how you make coils, very, very simple. You're going to take your wire and you're going to insert it into your bail making pliers. Um, just use, you know, right next to the jaw that you're trying to use. You want to make sure it's not sticking out the other side. And then you're going to use your thumb as a brace and you're just going to rotate your bail making pliers. You're going to see that your wire is starting to make a circle around your pliers. You're going to loosen your pliers, rotate them back, grab again, and rotate again. And you're just going to keep doing that. Now you notice your coils are springing up a little bit bigger because that's what wire does. So you're just going to keep this coiling action going until you have made enough links to create the amount of chain that you want. So basically, if I want a 16 inch chain, I need to make 16 links. Now, once again, since I, in my infinite wisdom, did not order 18 gauge sterling silver wire, I'm going to be making a bimetal chain. I'm going to be using gold filled and sterling silver wire on this chain. And so we're going to see how many coils can I get out of this piece of 18 gauge that I have and then we're going to subtract that from 16 and we're going to do the rest in gold filled. Okay, so this is my wire coil and I'm going to start cutting. So for my cutting, I need a flush wire cutter and a flush wire cutter is just a cutter that cuts a flat edge on the flat side of the cutter. So when I'm cutting my coil with my flush wire cutter, I want to make sure that I always have the flush side of my cutter towards whatever part of my circle is remaining, the part that's actually going to be my loop. So there's that one. I'm going to snip that off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip my cutter around and grab the next loop in the coil and trim that. And now I have a circle with two nominally flush ends. We're going to talk about that nominally part in a little bit. So now I have this end here that's not flush. So again, I'm going to go ahead and rotate my pliers. I'm going to nip that off to make it flush. Rotate my pliers and cut. So you also, if you are proficient with a jeweler saw, you 100% could saw these instead of cutting them. For me, it's a lot easier because I usually have wire cutters handy. So it's a lot easier for me just to snip them than to saw them. But if you're doing a lot of coils, sawing is actually more efficient. But again, it depends on what kind of relationship you have with your jeweler's saw. Sometimes your relationship with your jeweler's saw is harmonious and sometimes it is acrimonious. So, you know, if you and well, there you go. If you and your jeweler saw are not friends, then it's perfectly acceptable to cut these with wire cutters. All right, one more. I think is what I'm going to get out of this. So we have snip and snip. There we go. Okay, so how many circles did I get out of that coil? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so then that means I need nine coils in my gold filled wire. So I'm gonna go back to my bail making pliers. And once again, I'm using the middle here. So I'm just gonna start coiling. So you need more actual coils then, or sorry, that's a really terrible way of saying that. You need to create more coils than you need finished loops because you lose some with the cutting. So I need nine loops. I'm going to make probably 11 coils just to make sure I have enough. Also make sure you don't do what I just did. Make sure you don't jump to the other part of your bail making pliers. Okay. We want these all to be consistent in size. And I'm gonna blame that on the fact that I'm 
watching the screen instead of watching the project. I will help you doing that. Okay. So yes, yeah, so I have my new streaming computer set up. I'm very excited by this fact. The screen is gigantic. It's amazing how much more I can see now and how much I know that you guys have been seeing that I haven't even noticed because I was working on my teeny tiny little laptop screen. So now I have a beautiful 27 inch monitor. However, it was pointed out by um, another one of my staff earlier today that now I actually need to turn on the Heather cam if I want to see the Heather because I can't see her through this giant monitor. We're secrets to each other. Now. Right. Seriously, she could be, you know, doing all kinds of terrible things on the other side of that monitor. I would never even know. I can't hear her though, so there is that. She's, no. she's not as stealthy as she could be. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and trim this, and I really wasn't counting, so I may have to make a couple more coils, but we're going to see how many I can get off of here. Okay. Well, it's true. It is hard to file silently because there are noises that happen when filing. Yeah, now when I talk, I'm a disembodied voice to the internet and Allison. Exactly, and to me, it's true. Though, to be fair, I can Heather cam you anytime I want to. You do have that power. I mean, I have a button on my stream deck. With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what? Don't Heather cam you without letting you put on lipstick first? Yes. Okay, <laughs> good to know. There are probably other things, but that that's the most important to me personally. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> it is a soap. <laughs> but I'm very excited by the large screen. I'm very excited by the embarrassment of riches of USB ports on this oh, computer. It's amazing. So cool. There's so many, which is good because even though I got a monitor with integrated speakers when I just tested them, yeah, they're not very loud. They're what? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah, so, so, um, external speaker, is coming tomorrow, hopefully in time for the Zoom, because otherwise I'm, I seriously, I'm going to be like, what? What did you say? What's going on? <laughs> uh, speaking of, we need to send a Zoom email. Yes, we do. All right, so it's going for nine, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so I actually have plenty of circles. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and give each of these a quick file, and then I'm going to solder them together. So when you cut things with your flush cutter you're always going to have a burr in the middle of your wire you can kind of see it there you can see how that surface doesn't reflect like it's absolutely flat so this is where your file comes into place so i'm going to take my file and i'm just going to file the edge of that wire to flatten it out so that my burr goes away and i have a completely flat surface you can see it reflecting there so I'm just going to flatten out both of these and be like talking right. And then I'm going to tension fit my uh, circles. So to tension fit, I'm just going to um, move the ends past each other and then bring them back so that they snap against each other. And basically what's happening now is my ends are holding together with tension without me having to actually hold them. And it's not a complete circle anymore, and that's totally fine. So now we're going to go ahead and we're just going to speed file and tension fit all of these links. So, speaking of speakers, and that's not what I want, that's what I want. Speaking of speakers, and um, things where I need to hear all of you, don't forget tomorrow night is our Zoom Crafty Cocktail Hour. That means that tomorrow night at 6 p.m. you will not find us on Facebook. You will not find us on Twitch. You will find us on Zoom. 
with our crafty cocktail hour. That means it's time to grab a beverage, grab your favorite project, and get some work done. Heather and I, of course, will be here to help you all out with any issues you might have, um, and that's good for our projects or anyone else's projects or any projects that have you know come out of your own head where you just need a little bit of design or technical help. We are here for you. If you've never Zoomed with us before, we really love it. If you would join us, if you want the information for that Zoom, go ahead and email us, feedingdreamsdallas at gmail.com. If you have Zoomed with us before, Heather is sending out the email right now with the Zoom info for tomorrow, and we will also post that um, in the Discord. Okay, so you can see the filing process, it's a little time consuming, but not too bad if you've got a good sharp file and you're, you know, decent at filing, meaning that, you know, you've got all of your ducks in a row as far as hand positioning and whatnot. It doesn't take very long to file each individual link. All right, the Zoom email has gone out. So if you have Zoomed with us before and you did not get the Zoom email, please uh, email us, beatingdreamsdallas at gmail.com so that we can resend that to you. But everyone should have the information for tomorrow night's Crafty Cocktail Hour. All right, so I got all my silver ones done. I'm going to do my gold ones now. Um, some of you may be saying, hey, Allison, we're making a chain. Why aren't you linking anything together? And um, the way we're actually going to make this chain is we are going to solder all of these together. We're going to shape them, hammer them, and then we're going to cut half of them apart and re-solder them. And I know that seems a little bit um, inefficient, but I promise you it is a thousand times easier to shape these links once they're soldered rather than um, trying to do it when they're unsoldered. <laughs> right? Yay for email received. Awesome! Lori got it too. Yay! Yay. So again, we're hoping, I'm hoping I get my speaker by the time it's time for the Zoom tomorrow. Otherwise, I told Heather I just need to get an ear trumpet. Yes. You all will be shouting into the void instead of us. Right? <laughs> I also maintain that you need an ear trumpet no matter what. Well, that's fair. I mean, who doesn't need an ear trumpet just for dramatic effect? Yes. Makes right. you stand out from the crowd and run into the crowd. Fair. Okay, so I'm getting close. I'm down to my last six of my gold filled. So let's talk for a second while I'm doing this about soldering gold filled. So if you talk to any classically trained jeweler, they're going to tell you you cannot solder on gold filled. And they're not right, but they're also not wrong. So here's the skinny on soldering with gold filled. So yes, you can solder gold filled together and you can get it to bond and it'll be perfectly secure and, and wonderful. But what tends to happen when you're soldering gold filled is that you will scorch away the gold, especially around the joint, but also sometimes in random other spots on your metal. So when um, your classically trained jewelers say you can't solder gold filled, what they mean is you can't solder gold filled and um, be assured of a pristine result. Now, if you're okay with a less than pristine result, um, soldering gold filled is absolutely on the table. And your key to, to having that look as nice as possible is generally to use as little heat as you possibly can. So that means that gold filled soldering projects are better if they're small. So you don't have to put a ton of heat into them and um, it's uh, you know helpful if you're good with your torch so that you can you know basically torch on torch off very quickly rather than having to you know sink a lot of heat into your gold filled links or your gold filled whatever it doesn't have to be a link 
All right, so we're gonna continue to file. I've got two more. And then we're gonna solder these together. Last one. Okay, filing done. Now it's time to solder. So while I'm setting up my soldering, of course, that means that it is time for the five-point soldering safety lecture. Of course, I do need to always preface this by the fact that I am not any kind of credentialed anything as far as safety goes. I'm just some rando on the internet, so there's really no reason you should listen to me, but I have been teaching soldering for upwards of 10 years, and there are a number of things that are pretty consistent as far as um, creating a safe soldering workspace in your own home and as uh, far as being safe in a community soldering workspace. And I just mean these are things that come up again and again. So number one, try your best to have six to eight inches of clear space around your soldering area. Right? That means six to eight inches of space where there's nothing flammable or meltable. This is, of course, a do as I say, not as I do moment because I have cameras and lights right here all up on my soldering surface. Okay, this is not the best plan ever as the great webcam melting incident of the latter part of 2020 proves. For anybody who remembers that stream, yes, I did, in fact, melt my webcam live on stream from reflected heat from my torch. So... You melted it dead, actually. I, I did completely melt it dead. So the moral of the story here is keep seven, six to eight inches. Um, seven is fine. It's between six and eight of clear space around your soldering area at all times. Um, the interesting thing also about things that are meltable is usually once they melt, then they're also flammable. Number two, once you've had a torch going in your work area from that point forward, always assume that everything in your work area is hot enough to burn you because it probably is number three ventilation is important if you find yourself coughing hacking wheezing or feeling otherwise uncomfortable in the lung area after you've been soldering you may want to reconsider your ventilation situation number four if you're not actively using your torch turn it off these torches are very easy to ignite very easy to extinguish there's no reason to leave the torch burning if you're not actively using it. And number five, make sure you know where your fire extinguisher is at all times. So that is your five point super brief soldering safety lecture. Of course, if you are creating a soldering work area in your own home, by all means, actually consult with professionals like real safety professionals and do everything you can to make your soldering work area as safe as possible. If you are working in a community workspace, please, listen to obey all rules that are verbally or communicated by signs i promise even though they're a pain in the neck those rules are designed to keep your workspace as safe as possible okay so now i have solder and i've got my gold solder which i'm going to use on my gold filled and my sterling silver solder that i'm going to use on my silver bits so what do i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten twelve of my um, gold bits so i'm going to cut 12 pieces of gold solder. Yes, this is 14 karat gold solder. No, 14 karat gold solder is not cheap, uh, but it does look better on gold filled than anything else. And do bear in mind that you're using like a 16th of an inch per ring. So even though it's much more expensive than silver solder, um, it's still not that expensive if you just take a per unit cost. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, all right, and then of my sterling silver, and I'm going to use my sterling silver easy solder, okay, so this is the one that melts at the higher temperature, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yes.
Okay, so now that all my solder is cut, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flux all of my rings. So flux is this um, kind of white pasty substance, and what your flux does is it forms a barrier that prevents your metal from oxidizing, and that allows your soldering to work. So if you hit your metal with the torch without fluxing it, the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to turn black, it's going to oxidize, and the problem there is that that black layer, that oxide layer, is a layer um, that your solder can't actually penetrate. So you're not going to be able to actually solder your pieces if they oxidize. So we're going to flux the joint of each piece. And then on each piece, I'm going to grab a tweezers and I'm going to place a piece of solder onto each joint. So I'm going to try and um, remember which are my gold and which are my silver. So I'm just going to take my solder and I'm just going to drop it right on top of that joint. Um, now you can also put it underneath and actually set your ring on top of the solder. Um, that's totally up to you. You can pick transfer your solder if that's your thing. Um, typically that's my thing, but it's a little complicated to show on stream. So I'm going to do this instead. Isn't watching me place solder on things that aren't even on camera exciting? Yes. I think you're fibbing, Heather. But how would you know? You can't see. I can hear you. Okay, pause. And also I know for a fact that the watching me place solder that you can't even watch me place is really not exciting. Just saying. Okay. But hey, we're about to have fire and fire oh, according to ASO it's exhilarating. <laughs> We're about to have fire, and fire is always fun. Apparently, you're pretty wrong. Fine. I can be wrong on the internet. I've been wrong on the internet before. I will probably be wrong on the internet again, so... <laughs> is what it is. It's true. Okay, so once I've finished placing all of my solder... Then I'm going to light up the torch and I'm going to start blowing some solder, which is guaranteed to be a better time than what you're watching right now. Plus I might melt things. I might, well, I might melt my webcam. You never know. I wish that there was some kind of a heat shield for cameras, which I'm, I'm guessing there has to be, but I have not actually... sought this out in the world. Okay, so I'm going to turn on my torch, and I'm going to have my tweezers ready just in case any of my solder tries to hop off of any of my rings. All right, and then I'm just going to start heating everything really gently, and I just need to heat the entirety of each ring, and um, my flux, when it's time for my solder to flow, is going to turn clear, so I'm just going to heat, and there we go. So there is, so that solder flowed, there we go. Okay, so did you see that? So my solder flowed, but it didn't, it didn't actually close my joint. And so what I had to do is I had to use the heat to pull it across. So where is my actual joint down here? Oh, nowhere near my solder. It's exciting. Phew, go down by the joint. So solder flows towards heat, which is a pretty cool feature of it because you actually can direct it using your heat. You can pull it across a joint. However, you need to have a torch that's actually full of fuel, which mine is not. Mine has a very small, see how tiny small that flame is? Yeah, that's not going to do it. So excuse me while I go grab some fuel.
Okay, so I'm just going to fill up my torch, and this is going to work a little bit better. So this is just standard butane fuel. Um, if you're using your butane torch for soldering, you really do want to invest in a good quality butane fuel. You can get it from cigar shops. I get mine from Amazon. But it, it really does make a huge difference. Also notice I'm not filling my torch over my work surface. I've got it over um, this empty space that's next to my table. That is because butane is heavier than air. It will puddle. And if you let it puddle on your workspace, then you're going to wind up with um, some crazy flash fire things going on, which is pretty and also scary. So now we're going to see it now. I have much bigger flame. Yay, bigger flame. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and solder the rest of these. Okay, old eyes, not a fan. So I'm just going to hit these and I'll, I'll hit the ones that are off camera and the ones that are on camera. So when you're, when you're doing kind of a mass soldering event like this, your most efficient way to go about it is to just kind of lay everything out, you know, so that you can just kind of wham bam and get everything all at once. Not all at once, but you know, in sequence. Also, I'm going to try and pick these up as soon as I've soldered them because the flux residue will stick them to the soldering board and that's like this one here. He's stuck. So I'm just going to heat that and then turn it up. But yeah, so it's really fun to just kind of be like, yes, solder all of you, bam, bam, bam. You can make video game raises or not. It's up to you. I mean, we are on Twitch, so there's that. Exactly. Ooh, that solder just like, ooh. Yeah. It did with the greatest of ease. Oh, I really, yeah, so when I was in uh, entertainment, I uh, used to be a professional uh, modern dancer. I wish that Ariel had been as popular then as it is now, because it's much more easily accessible now than back when I was dancing, so I never actually got a chance to try Ariel, but oh man. A lot of my dancer friends who are still in the industry are doing it now, and it looks like so much fun. Yeah. Of course, to be fair, I, if I were going to do aerial now, I would need a lot more muscles than I am currently possessed of. Uh-huh. <laughs> And what I, do. I don't know. My, my, oh, e, oh dear. All right. Well, I just dropped one of those on the floor. Here's hoping it doesn't start a fire. My OEM knees are not working so well. So I, I would be up for some aftermarket parts. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'd come with a nifty remote control. Okay, so problem in that my solder has gone rogue. No, my solder doesn't know better. Well, Asa, I think the whole idea of, you know, Ariel is that you're not supposed to hit the ground. You're supposed to stay up there. Pretty sure that's the way it's supposed to work. That's what I hear. Okay, so I've got all of my pieces soldered together, except for this one didn't solder, so this one's getting kicked off the island. And I have one that fell on the floor and is luckily not bursting into flames, so that's awesome. So I have this nice little pile of soldered circles here. 
Now I'm going to grab my round nose pliers. I'm apparently going to smash my camera with my round nose pliers, which was not planned. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of these and I'm going to be careful picking them up because some of them are hotter than others. But I'm going to take each of these and I'm going to take my round nose pliers. I'm going to put them inside that circle and then I'm just going to stretch. So I'm just going to take my round nose and just open them up. Okay, really? Maybe that's not how I did that. I feel like that's not how I did that. Let's try that again, shall we? Now, adding two tools to... <laughs> Sorry, y'all. You know, sometimes... It, sometimes it's a, we sleep. Sometimes I sleep in between, you know, making the prototype and actually, you know, teaching the tutorial. And sometimes I forget the way that I did things. Okay, so I didn't do it with my round nose. The reason I didn't, because these are too wide. So what I did instead is I took two files and I just used the handles. You could use crochet hooks. I just needed something that was consistent in size and just put one on either end of your circle and then just stretch and twist. And that's going to be how you make your paper clip shape links. And I'm going to do that with all of my little links. So you just want to stretch them all out. And at this point with the, all of the oxide and everything, it's kind of hard for me to tell what is what. And so I'm just going to, I'm going to decide not to care. Like, the silver and the gold, I'm just going to mix them together however you want. Now, you'll notice some of these are going to be blobby on the joints. That's because I used a little bit more solder than I needed to. You also want to try and put the joints on the long sides of your paper clips. If you put them up here, there's a chance, a pretty good chance, and by pretty good I mean that I did it when I was making my prototype, that you're actually going to solder your links um, to each other, which is not what you want. You want your links to be soldered you don't want them to be soldered to each other. You want them to be free moving. Okay, so I'm just stretching all of my links. Now you go on that side. And so you're just going to pull them apart and then if you want to, if you want to add a little bit more force, just grab them, your two files, and then pull and twist. And that will give you a nice stretched out um, link. Also, if you need to take your chain nose pliers, you can smash that like so and flatten that out as well. So I'm continuing on just to stretch all of these. <laughs> Fair. Get new knees as soon as you can. Good to know. Um, all right, so my next step is I'm going to cut half of these rings, paper clips, now that I've shaped them, um, at the solder joint, and I'm going to use them to link everything together. And then theoretically, I should be able to solder them back together with the same solder that's already on there. That doesn't always work for me, so we're going to see how it goes. Um, and then we do need a clasp for this, so while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and just grab a little bit of my 18 gauge wire, and I'm just going to make a really simple little hook clasp. So I just need a couple of inches of that wire and I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to just bend that around like so and then you can grab your bail making pliers or if you want to make a slightly smaller hook you can use um, any convenient round object to just make your hook like so and then I don't need this to be quite this long, so I'm just going to trim this off and kick that end out. Um, and so that I can attach and actually solder closed while I'm doing all of this. All right, so let's figure out how many of these links do I need to cut. 
Alright, so that's going to go there. Oh, and hey, let's talk about hammering. If you want to hammer your links, which I am going to do, you want to do that now. Okay, don't wait until your chain is all together because that is going to be a huge pain in the butt. So at this point, I'm going to take my bench block, which is my steel block, and my chasing hammer. Ta-da! I'm going to take each link, put it on my block, and hammer it flat. It's going to get loud, so if you need to mute me, now's the time. All right, so there is my hammered link. See, I've just flattened it like so. So just flatten the entire link. That does a couple of things. It gives the links a little bit more strength, though you're going to lose some of that strength when you solder it because you're going to be annealing the links. And um, it also just gives it a cool look. So that that's neither here nor there. That's just aesthetics. But I'm going to go ahead and solder, or not solder, hammer all of these. Sorry, I should have left a little bit more space between my camera and my bench block. So that I won't keep smacking it. So you can hammer pretty firmly, but you don't have to, you know, beat the living snot out of these poor babies. Like, just, you know, you just want to flatten them somewhat. Sorry for the heading of the camera, one more, and then I'm also going to hammer my clasp. And I'm just going to hammer it right on the curve, that's going to give it a little bit of extra strength. Alright, so now we're back to how many of these lengths do I need to cut? So I'm going to start by taking my clasp and attaching it to one of my end links like so. All right, and then let's let's go ahead and let's lay this out. So So I'm just laying everything out kind of alternating. So in my head, these are the links that are going to stay intact and these are the links that are going to be cut. Um, you want to always try and cut as few links as possible just for um, sturdiness of your chain. And, yeah, that end actually had no, there was, there was nothing there, sorry. Okay, so that's all of, all right, so I got to cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven links. Okay, so I'm going to take my cut links and I'm just going to take my, pliers and I'm going to just cut them and then I'm just going to go back real quick with my file and file. So I'm trying to cut on the solder joint. Okay. That way I can just reflow that solder and hopefully join everything together. Now in case that doesn't work, um, then I also have my extra easy solder that I can use if I need to. All right, so I've cut all of these on the solder joints. Now I'm just going to take my file quickly, just give it a quick file to make sure that everything is nice and flat. And then I'm going to take my open link and put two closed links on it, like so. And then tension fit that together. 
Now at this point, it's a real pain in the neck to try and shape these. So you wanna, at this point, try and preserve your shape. So again, I've got a cut link. I'm just gonna do a quick file. And then I'm gonna link, so I'm gonna take my chain that I'm making, I'm gonna link this closed link and another closed link. And then again, I'm gonna tension fit that. So I'm gonna keep doing this until I've got all of my links linked together. So chain making is one of those things that, um, it can be very meditative, it can be very boring, it really just depends. I'm down to three viewers, so I'm guessing that some of y'all think that it's boring. But it's a nice, it's nice to be able to make your own chain if you're in a pinch or if you want a style of chain that you just can't get. It, it's, it is nice to be able to fabricate it, I think. That's just my opinion. So again, just filing and then linking together. And I think for the sake of time, we're gonna go ahead and make this chain um, only this long. So I've got a couple of links that I can solder on later if I want to. And I'm gonna take this last open link and attach it onto the link that the chain, or not the chain, the clasp is on. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab my soldering board. And we're just gonna lay this out. And so I have so I have a solid link and then a cut link, solid link, cut link, solid link, cut link, etc. I'm gonna flux all of my cut links. And I just want to make sure that their solder is not anywhere near the other pieces of chain. And then we're just gonna see if we can reflow this solder and solder these together. So we're gonna start with this one here. We're just going to heat it and then focus on the joint. And there we go. See that solder just reflowed and sealed my joint. Now we're going to do this one. See? So, so the solder that's there can and will reflow. Sometimes this is a, a helpful feature. Sometimes this is not a helpful feature. Sometimes this is a bug rather than a feature, but in this instance it is extremely helpful. And then if I want to solder my little clasp together, I need to make sure that it's again not in contact at all with my chain, which is a little difficult because I could have made my loop smaller and I didn't. But I'm just going to flex that and I'm going to take the tiniest little piece of my 14 karat gold solder, like a really, really small piece. Okay, maybe not that small because I lost it. There we go. And take that little tiny piece, just set it right there where I know I want to solder that clasp closed. And then we're just gonna heat that. Flowed, and I think that soldered it together. So there we go. So this is our soldered paper clip chain. Yay! See? Now it's gonna go in the pickle pot. So let's talk for just a minute while that's pickling about what pickle is and what it does. Pickle is a weak acid solution, and what it does is it cleans all of the crud off of your metal. So all of that oxide, all the flux residue, all the black stuff and gross stuff. What in the world is going on with my hairs? Goodness gracious. Um, yeah, it cleans all the black stuff and gross stuff off of your metal so that you can polish your metal and make it pretty. Now, typically what I would do after I pickle is I would put my metal into my tumbler. Okay, my tumbler is it's literally a tumbler if you had a rock tumbler 
when you were a kid, it's the same machine. Um, I've got two, I've got a vibratory and a rotary. So it, it basically shakes your model around in a container that is filled with stainless steel shot, basically stainless steel BBs and water. What that does is the action of the BB smashing against your metal shines it and makes it um, pretty and polished. Now, if you don't have a tumbler, you can finish by hand the way that I'm going to show you. You can also um, finish with a rotary tool or a flex shaft, though, when you're doing chains, I wouldn't recommend it, okay? Buffing wheels, flex shaft, when you're doing chains, it's way too easy for them to grab the chains, pull them out of your hand, possibly get tangled in your fingers, that could lead to injury. So when I'm finishing chains, really, um, tumbling is my preferred method of finishing um, if it's available to me. All right, so now my chain is pickled and um, I can tell it's it's pickled because it's clean. All right, so I've got my gold filled, I've got my sterling silver and all the black junk is gone off of my chain now. At this point, I could throw it in my tumbler or I could do um, my steel wool. This is fine steel wool, it's quadruple zero. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set this down on my paper towel and I'm just gonna give it a buff with the steel wool. Now your steel wool is not going to give you a super shiny finish. It's going to give you kind of a satiny silver finish, but it's, you know, prettier than the, the finish just out of the pickle. And the cool thing about this is you can always go back and um, tumble your chain after the fact. So if you're like, I just finished this chain and I'm so excited by it and I want to wear it out of my class or work session or whatever, do it by all means do it but um you know if you want to tumble it later you can so i did have a little bit of an issue here where i did in fact solder that clasp to my chain womp womp that is not um even a little bit what i was trying to do there that's exactly in fact what i wasn't trying to do there and it's right there that little bit of solder that flowed and um, bonded those together so at this point um, I got a couple of options. What I'm probably going to do is I'm going to reheat that, see if I can pop it off, and then I'll go ahead and throw it in my tumbler. But for now, that's how you make paperclip chain, y'all. It's actually quite fun. Like I said, a little bit meditative, a little bit time consuming, but definitely a good skill to have in a pinch and also just a good exercise of your general soldering skills because, you know, there's a lot of links in a chain. Like I'm about halfway done with my with my paper clip chain so i got another you know 50 percent of this to go so it's good for practicing your filing it's good for practicing your soldering your hammering all of those things so thank you all so much for hanging out on the torch thursday beating dreams stream for anybody out there yay thanks Lori. for anybody out there who doesn't know me i'm allison from beating dreams in dallas texas we are an actual brick and mortar retail bead store we're here on lovers lane in dallas we're open Monday through Saturday from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. So if you're local in Dallas, please come stop by, say hi, check us out. If you're not local in Dallas, you can find us on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream five times a week with complimentary tutorials. We stream Wednesday through Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time plus Thursdays at noon. Live merchandise sales every Wednesday and every Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Central. However, tomorrow night, you will not find us on Facebook. You will not find us on Twitch. You will find us on Zoom with our Crafty Cocktail Hour again. If you want the info, for that meeting, please email us, beatingdreamsdallas at gmail.com, and um, we will send you the credentials to access that fun and silly good time that we're all going to have tomorrow night. But for now, that's it for me and Heather. So everyone have a fantastic Thursday night, and have a great Friday, and we'll see you all on Zoom tomorrow night at 6 p.m. If you're not going to Zoom with us, we'll see you all back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream Saturday night at 6 p.m. That is going to be our magic wands project. Okay. This is a fun kind of whimsical one. So um, if you feel like if you're feeling the magic wands, join us on Saturday evening. But for now, everyone have a great Thursday evening. Have a great Friday and I'll see you all on Zoom tomorrow.